In this video tutorial, we will be looking at the ion product constant of water, also known as Kw, as well as the brief review of the pH and pOH scales and their simple calculations. In our last video tutorial, we looked at the bronsted lowry definition of acids and bases. Could you please press the pause button and then try to identify which of these compounds is considered to be the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base? Once you're done, press play and we will go over the answers. So if you recall, I gave you an acronym to memorize, big ale, where base is gain and acid is loss. But gain and loss of what? Well, a proton, an H plus ion. So whichever compound gains the H plus ion is considered the base, and whichever ion of a compound loses the H plus ion is considered to the acid. So if you look at HCN over here, it looks very similar to CN. In the process, it seems to have lost the H. So because it lost the H, this is considered to be my acid. Acid is loss. Now, once HCN loses the acid, it is now considered to be the conjugate base. All right, so exact opposite. While this is an acid, this is now a conjugate base. Because if we go in the other direction, because these reactions are often um, reversible, if I go in this opposite direction, the CN will gain an H going from here to here, and base is gain. All right, so we call this acid and conjugate base. They are conjugate acid-base pairs. Whereas H2O seems to have gained an H plus ion, and so base is gain, thus this one is my base, and it becomes a conjugate acid once it gains the H. Let's take a look at this one over here. It looks very, very similar to this. And in between here to there, it looks like it's gained an H plus. Therefore, base is gain. This is considered to be a base, and it turns into a conjugate acid. H2 on the other side seems to have lost an H. Acid is loss, so this is considered to be an acid, and this would be called a conjugate base instead. Now if you look carefully, you'll notice that water is acting as both the acid and a base. So in the first reaction, it's acting as a base, but in the second reaction, it's acting as an acid. That's because water is considered to be amphoteric. If you're looking at different textbooks, they might call it amphiprotic, but for now, just consider them the uh, interchangeable, amphoteric. So water is an amphoteric substance, meaning it can act as both an acid or a base depending on the situation, depending on who it's reacting with. So in the top reaction, HCN, prefers to lose its H's more than water would. And so HCN will lose its H, give it to the water, turn it into a hydronium ion instead. So in that case, water is acting as a base. Versus the acetate ion, this one has a tendency to gain H's more than water would. So in that situation, the acetate will grab the hydrogen from the water, turning it into the hydroxide ion, and so that makes the water molecule here an acid. So because water can act as both an acid and a base, it can react with itself in a neutralization reaction. So in this case over here, this water molecule has gained an H, in order to turn itself into hydronium. That makes this one a base, because our base is gain. It's gain an H to become that one. And then acids are the ones that loses H's, so this water over here has lost an H to this guy, and so acid is lost. That makes this one the acid. And so, of course, when it gains the H, it now is called the conjugate acid, and when it loses the H+, plus, it is now called the conjugate base. All right, so if we go in the reverse direction, now this one will lose an H to turn itself into water. That's why it's called an acid, conjugate acid. Whereas this one over here would gain an H, conjugate base, base is gain, to become this one over here. So water will react with itself in something called the auto-ionization process of water, where water will auto-ionize with itself, so self-ionize, going from polar molecules into ions. So this process can be described with an equilibrium expression going from products over reactants. But if you recall, reactants, because water is a pure liquid, we can uh, remove it from the expression itself, leaving us with Kq equaling the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide. Because water is so important to us, we give it its own variable, Kw, known as the ion product constant of water. Uh, its value at 25 degrees Celsius, so at room temperature, is 1.0 times 10 to the power negative 14. And this is one of the reasons why the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. If you recall, the pH scale is a logarithmic scale, meaning each jump on the pH scale is actually a factor of 10. So if I say, oh, this one over here, pH of 2 versus pH of 4, what's the difference? It's not twice as acidic. It's actually 10 times 10, 100 times more acidic. 
Same thing, if I go from pH 3 to pH 6, it's not that it's twice as acidic or twice as basic, it's a factor of 10 times 10 times 10, or in this case, 1,000 times stronger or more acidic. Furthermore, the pH scale is a negative logarithm, meaning the higher up you go on the pH scale, the smaller and smaller and smaller it gets. And that's why a solution becomes more basic as you increase the pH scale, as it goes higher. Because if you have less and less and less hydronium ions, the reaction will shift its equilibrium forward to replenish it back up. But in the process, as you replenish the H3O plus levels, you're also boosting up the hydroxide levels as well. And you'll always have more hydroxides than hydroniums if that's the case, which makes the solution more basic. Now the exact opposite is true. If you increase the hydronium concentration, the more hydroniums you have, so a big number over here, then that will shift the equilibrium in this direction over here to give you more water. So at that point, it will bring the hydronium concentration back down, but it also brings down the hydroxide concentration as well. So you have less base and more acid in that case, making the solution more acidic. All right, so to sum this up, the pH scale is a negative logarithm. Each jump on the scale is a factor of 10 each time you go up another level and uh, the more you increase it the less hydronium there is but the more hydroxide there is and of course vice versa the more you increase the concentration of a hydronium the less you'll have a hydroxide making the solution more acidic in a perfectly neutral solution you would have the same concentration of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions and they would just react together to form water molecules again so if you have the same number of our uh, same concentration of hydronium and hydroxide, solving for 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14 with an x squared gives you 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7 for each. So at 25 degrees Celsius, the hydronium concentration and the hydroxide concentration is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7, which is one of the reasons why a pH neutral solution is a pH of 7. So this is the equation we use to calculate pH. First make sure you have a logarithm button on your calculator. Some calculators will allow you to just press the negative symbol, then the logarithm button, then punch in whatever number you're trying to calculate. Be aware that the negative symbol will look something like this, or this, or this on most calculators. Don't just press the minus sign. A subtraction sign on the calculator versus negative symbols on the calculator, two different things. However, some calculators require you to press the number first, then the logarithm button, then the negative symbol. All right, so just make sure you know which calculator you have. Is it the one that uh, requires you to press negative, then log, then your number value? Or the one that requires you to press your number value, then the log, then the negative button? All right, so going back to the equation, notice how it's negative logarithm of the hydronium concentration. So make sure your hydronium concentration, the concentration of H plus ions floating in solution, is measured in moles per liter. So if you quickly want to try out this question over here, just put in the negative logarithm of this number, so negative log, then punch in this number over here, you should get an answer of 6.70. But what if I want to go in reverse? What if they give me the pH value and ask me to find the hydronium concentration instead? So what we're going to use at that point is this equation over here. The hydronium concentration measured in moles per liter is equal to 10 to the power of negative pH. So I'll plug in my pH value in over here and 10 to the power of negative 4.5 is equal to 3.16 times 10 to the power of negative 5 moles per liter. Now just remember, anytime I write H+, plus, what I really mean is hydronium, all right, H3O+. Plus. It's just a shortened way of writing it out. So let's try this uh, question out over here. If the H2SO4 concentration is 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 4 moles per liter, what is the pH equal to? So we're going to assume that it's a complete ionization. It's not true, but uh, this makes our calculation a little easier. And also shows off the ratio aspect of hydronium concentration versus acid concentration. So press the pause button when you're ready. Unpause the video and we will go over the solution. All right, so if we're assuming that the sulfuric acid will completely ionize, that means one H2SO4 will release two H plus ions, and then only one SO4 will be released. So it's a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. So if my concentration of H2SO4 is 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 4, then I'll have double that concentration for H+, but a 1 to 1 ratio for sulfate. Since we're calculating pH, I'm going to look at the equation, negative log of the H plus concentration. So I'm only going to take this value over here and punch it into this equation. Again, remember, H plus means hydronium, H3O+, but we're just doing this to simplify our equation. 
and that becomes negative log of the 4.36 10 to the power of negative 4, so we have a pH of 3.36 in the end. So the trick to this question is making sure that you remember it's a 1 to 2 ratio for how many hydromas are released. Don't just plug in the actual concentration of H2SO4 because the equation requires you for the concentration of H plus ions, not H2SO4. That's the only trick for this particular question over here. All right, let's try this other question over here. If the pH of HCl is 1.80, what is its molar concentration? Again, press the pause button. When you're ready, unpause the video and let's go over it. All right, so this question is the reverse of the other one. So we're going to use this equation. The hydronium concentration is equal to 10 to the power of negative pH. Again, H plus is just a simplified version of H3O plus. So what I mean is, instead of writing out the whole equation where HCl reacts with water, so because HCl is the acid, acid is lost, it loses the H plus ions, gives it to the water molecule. The water molecule, since it gains the H plus, is considered to be a base in this case, base is gain. And then from there, it's going to turn it into a hydronium ion, the conjugate acid at that point, leaving behind the chlorine ion and ion over here, which is considered to be the conjugate base at that point. All this can be simplified, of course, by just saying HCl aqueous, because aqueous means dissolved in water, so we assume this reaction is going to happen anyway. And then we all together, you're just releasing the H plus ion and the Cl minus. But instead of saying H plus, really we mean H3O plus. So just be aware that H plus and H3O plus, they are interchangeable in this case over here. Anyway, back to our equation. So 10 to the power of negative 1.80, which was the pH gives you 1.58 times 10 to the power of negative 2 moles per liter, and that is the H plus concentration. But the question says, what is the HCl concentration? But in this case, HCl versus H plus, for every 1 HCl releases 1 H plus, so it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Therefore, the answer is the same as if it was just H plus. So just be aware, again, we got to factor in those ratios. Don't forget those ratios. They won't always be 1 to 1. All right, so while the pH scale measures how much hydronium is floating around the solution, how acidic the solution is, the pOH scale measures how much hydroxide is floating around in the solution, so how basic the solution is. Again, the pH and the pOH scales are identical to each other in the sense that they're both negative logarithms. They just measure different uh, components of the solution instead. As such, both the pH and pOH equations are identical in both respects. All right? The only difference is replace hydronium with hydroxide, and pH with pOH instead. Now, if you ever need to convert between the two, always remember the pH plus pOH adds up to 14. All right, so if I give you a pH value, you can solve for the pOH and vice versa. So what I want you to do is try out these two questions over here. Uh, press pause. When you're ready, press play, and we'll go over it together. All right, so for part B, we want to find the pH if the hydroxide concentration is 1.41 times 10 to the power of negative 11 moles per liter. So if we try to plug it into this equation, pH is negative log of hydronium, this is not the hydronium concentration. I cannot plug it into this equation, so I can't use this equation right off the bat. So the other equation I can use to solve for pH is this one over here. And so once we rearrange it, we find that pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. Now I can calculate for pOH and then substitute it in from that point on. So there's the hydroxide concentration, negative log of the hydroxide concentration, 1.41 10 to the power of negative 11, equals 10.85. Once I've got the pOH value, I can now substitute it in over here, and therefore my final pH is 3.15. All right, so with part B, I'm given pOH, and I want to find the hydronium concentration. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, punch this into this equation over here to find pH, and then from there, solve for hydronium. So we get pH is equal to 14 minus 9.5, the pOH, which is equal to 4.5. Once I've got the pH of 4.5, substitute into this equation, 10 to the power of negative pH, gives you 3.16 times 10 to the power of negative 5 moles per liter. All right, so let's try this question out. Magnesium hydroxide concentration is 1.29 times 10 to the power of negative 5 moles per liter. What is its pH? Again, you can assume complete dissociation. So press pause. When you're ready, press play, and we'll go over it together. So let's write out the equation for pH. pH is equal to negative log of H plus concentration, but again, we can't use this equation because the magnesium hydroxide does not release any H plus ions. So that is out the window. We're going to instead use pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH. And then from there, calculate the pOH value, which we can calculate because it's negative log of the OH concentration, which is something that the magnesium hydroxide will release. 
Again, the ratio of magnesium hydroxide to hydroxide, it's not one to one, can't assume it, but for every one magnesium hydroxide, it will release two hydroxides, one to two ratio. So if this was the concentration of the magnesium hydroxide, and the hydroxide concentration is double that, well, double that value is 2.58, 10 to the power of negative 5, which we can then use to plug into this equation over here. So punching that in, negative logarithm of the 2.58, 10 to the power of negative 5, gives you a pOH value of 4.59. I can then use this value and substitute it over here, which gives me... 9.41. And that makes sense because magnesium hydroxide is a basic solution and the pH is in the basic range because it's above 7. Alright, so that concludes our brief review of the pH and pOH scale. Our next video tutorial will deal with acid and base strength.